Hey, what's good, my brothers and sisters? This is Enemy Stand User here, and welcome to Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 228. And man, what a crazy chapter this week. A Gojo versus Sukuna fight just ramped up, and now it's anyone's guess as to what can happen next. And I'll tell you guys though, it is not looking too good for Gojo. With this chapter, we open with Gojo's condensed domain plan from the cliffhanger, and the onlooking sorcerers say that, in theory, a smaller domain should make the barrier stronger. Right now, it's not even the size of a basketball, and immediately our cast begin explaining this phenomenon. Sakabe regards that this is impossible, even considering how many times impossible has been said throughout this fight. And I like that Maki brings up why is it impossible when usually a normal domain is a different size from the inside than it is from the outside. Of course, they consider Dagon's beach island domain, and in that circumstance, it's near impossible to locate the perimeter or the edge of the inside to escape. Even if you do locate the edge in the domain, it's still strong to trap targets within. Sakabe mentions the most important thing to have is a concrete image. So since the domain is even smaller than something like a basketball, if a normal sorcerer envisioned a domain small like that, it would break. However, because Gojo was trapped in prison realm for quite some time, he applied that same experience or that same feeling of being trapped inside there to his actual domain expansion. Thus, he created a smaller condensed domain. But Sakabe doesn't get how Gojo changes his domain conditions on the fly. Since domain expansion barriers are created when sorcerers blend external and internal conditions, volume and construction speed to make the perfect cocktail or that perfect blend to bring forth their domain. Aguruma and Hakari are unaware of this, but this is because both of them have curse techniques that have domains by default, literally built into their curse techniques. So for more standard sorcerers, changing that blend or recipe, so to speak, would be quite a feat. The domains are now engaged in combat, and it looks like Gojo tried to absorb the entirety of Malevolent Shrine, but maintaining a domain of that size is too difficult and has worse quality, so Gojo decided to shrink it. And at first, it seems the domain is holding up. However, Sukuna's output has increased because the infective range has been shrunken down. And in this situation, Gojo will lose when he runs out of options. And then we see the domain expansion has broke for a third time. So it looks like Sukuna went 3-0. Even Yuji is the first one worried about his sensei. However, Shrine is also broken and Sukuna is seriously injured. I like his students' reactions like Hakari. They're cheering that it was the same time, it was simultaneous. And now it's a 3-1 lead this time since they traded. Sukuna broke Gojo's domain from the outside and Gojo inflicted enough damage on Sukuna that he couldn't maintain his own domain. And I love how Kusakabe just goes full coach mode and he asks his students for the time like they're keeping track. He kind of scolds Miwa and the rest of the students for not keeping track. Huh? And Kusakabe, he seems probably like the most invested teacher that actually knows how to teach. And this also hints that the students should be taking notes right now. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity with this battle between the strongest happening right before their eyes so they all can learn from it. However, Meimei tracks the time and said Gojo's barrier lasted 3 minutes and 9 seconds and when the barrier shrank, it lasted 3 minutes exactly. And now in this situation, they both cannot use their curse techniques after domain expansion. And at first, you may think Gojo has an advantage since he can use reverse curse to replenish his curse technique quickly. But Yuta points out, of course, Sukuna can use reverse curse technique. Yuta can use reverse curse as well. However, Yuta cannot heal his burnt out curse technique. However, since Gojo showed Sukuna how to do it, it's implied that Sukuna can heal his burnt out curse technique as well. Angel explains that with Kenjaku's help, he split Sukuna's soul into 20 cursed objects. And with that single opportunity, he managed to learn how to become a cursed object himself. So Angel is implying that Sukuna can recover his burnt out curse technique because Gojo showed him. I think in Shibuya, even if Sukuna used his flame arrow technique after that domain, we don't know enough about the nature of that curse technique or how it works or how he'd really suffer from curse technique burnout. But here we see Sukuna still has a way around it and he is now implied to be able to heal from that burnt out curse technique. But that's only something that he learned now after seeing it from Gojo. 
Takuna kind of spaces himself out and zips away from Gojo as Gojo already seems to have his curse technique back as he floats in the air and uses some form of limitless to rupture the areas around Sukuna. Gojo crashes down on him and when Sukuna evades, Gojo is right on his tail as he gives him a swift kick forcing Sukuna back. Clearly Gojo puts up a bit more pressure outside of domain battles but he wonders to himself why is Sukuna so stubborn that he only uses his curse technique dismantle and cleave that's imbued in that domain and nothing else. Earlier we know Gojo reversed the conditions of the domain so it's weak on the inside and strong on the outside. Yet Sukuna still did not choose to break it on the inside. Instead, Sukuna took a super risky move of touching Gojo and breaking it from the outside. When Gojo knew this, he thought since the curse techniques cancel out, Sukuna had no way to actually attack him besides using domain amplification to break past Limitless. That in itself gives Gojo a huge advantage. And in the domain, Sukuna couldn't use buildings or anything like that around to attack Gojo, so it's even more of an advantage. In fact, Gojo honestly thinks that he had the lead for those three minutes before his domain broke from the outside. So even though it was off screen, we learn a couple of things. First, that Sukuna's dismantle and cleave is not really enough for Gojo's Limitless, not without a sure hit or external help from something like a building like he did before. The second being that even though his domain broke, this third time around, Gojo had some kind of lead and he did in fact manage to seriously injure Sukuna enough so that his domain broke as well. Moving on to the last section though, Gojo wonders why didn't Sukuna use his other body's techniques like Ten Shadows or the Makora, the Maharaga Shikigami. Sukuna knows that Gojo knows about it since Megumi and Gojo talked about it in the past before and Gojo guesses that is he afraid Maharaga will get destroyed in one hit? Just then, we see it. The Dharma chakra wheel has clicked and suddenly Gojo's nose starts to bleed and he gets dizzy. The chapter ends with, what do those eyes see through? Wow. So Sukuna actually pulled it out, or rather, he tucked it away in the shadows and used the wheel like some sort of get out of jail free car. As we know, the wheel allows the user to adapt to any and all phenomena. So because the wheel clicked, it's a heavy indication that Sukuna did something to Gojo. Right now, there's a lot of theories that Sukuna used poison or toxins because way back in chapter 76, Gojo revealed that he couldn't distinguish poisonous objects with his limitless and even with reverse curse technique, healing from poison requires finding and removing the toxin from within using a higher degree of reverse curse technique. And also, Sukuna is known as the king of lethal poisons and curses, so it could hint toward how he can attack Gojo with poison. But I really don't see any visible sign of poison, so maybe it's gaseous or in the air. But Yuta and Hikari have been shown to remove poison with reverse curse technique, so there's no real reason why their sensei Gojo couldn't as well. Especially when Gojo had over 10 years since he made that statement back in chapter 76 to protect himself against toxins. So it's iffy for how much he improved as an adult. But there are really heavy hints that Gojo is very fatigued. Even Gojo admits that what he does using reverse curse technique to replenish himself and his curse technique is very tiring. Now imagine spamming reverse curse technique over three domain battles consecutively. Meanwhile spamming simple domain and falling blossom emotion and even using your own curse technique in between all of that. Eno already hinted that his cursed energy never runs out. But after consecutive domains it might be a different case. Shoko said constant limitless would fry his brain, and even when he constantly refreshes himself using said reverse curse, it's still an extremely overwhelming process like Yuta said. It's interesting that Gojo literally covers his eyes so as not to get tired because the six eyes is such an overwhelming sensory ability. And I imagine Gojo is really testing the limits and like overclocking his six eyes, so fatigue is definitely something to consider as well. Since Sukuna is using the wheel and we saw the wheel spin before that panel, it definitely has something to do with Gojo's infinity or how it affects him, though it could be a mix of the wheel and also Gojo's own fatigue. But I don't think I have to mention just how much of an insane advantage the Dharma Chakra gives Sukuna, especially when he tucked it away in that shadow realm. 
so it's always just adapting and Gojo can't even interact with it. So now he'll be able to adapt to Limitless or he already has adapted to it since the wheel has spun. And I already know about the fraud Maho Merchant allegations that Sukuna has that Sukuna can't beat Gojo without the 10 shadows. Even Gojo pokes fun that Sukuna ran away from Yuji and now he wants to talk tough. But if Sukuna has that power, might as well use it. The 10 shadows is just about the only thing that I imagine beating Gojo. If y'all aren't tired of this reminder already, 400 years ago, the Gojo clan head and the Zenin clan heads killed each other and one had the six eyes plus Limitless and the other had the ten shadows so it heavily hints that the ten shadows is a hard counter to Limitless and Gojo could lose or struggle in this battle. It makes you think that maybe Sukuna's shrine techniques aren't effective enough on its own or without the Dharma's adaptation so now it's much easier to hit Gojo if he uses them in conjunction. Of course, it's not Gojo over yet. Gojo will find a method to deal with Sukuna and the Ten Shadows like he's been doing this whole fight. I don't think just because Sukuna uses Ten Shadows that it's just an automatic win button, but Gojo will still give him a hard fight, and we will still likely see Sukuna reveal his original curse technique and see why he uses the Dharma Chakra's adaptation wheel in the first place. It looks like this is the next stage of this battle, so let's actually see what Gojo does when literally all the odds are stacked against him. Though this was a very cool chapter, I'm hyped for next week and I'd really like to see how Sukuna utilizes his actual real curse technique against an adversary like Gojo and how that would play out. But thankfully there is no break next week so we get to see Gege greatness next time. I hope you guys are hyped for Jujutsu Kaisen and hyped for season 2 as well which has already dropped by the time this video is out and I'll try to make some content on the series as it comes out. But you amazing brothers and sisters take care. This has been Emmy Stan User and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.